Hello everyone and welcome to another FM23 series here on the channels. For this series we are starting in the Vanarama National League and the goal in mind to reach the Premier League in this series. This is all about building, building, building. We are starting with York City here as you see. Uh, that was chosen by random. Honestly just uh, I had loaded up like a little database and just was like yeah pick my team for me type of thing and it loaded them up so that uh that worked out well for us as far as to be able to have a team because i like york city i know they're a team that had just got promoted from the north league up to now the just the uh Rama national league so that is you know a bit of a challenge to start off with but I, i'm super excited this is uh you know in the english pyramid in itself i think it's my favorite pyramid in, in football to be honest i just i don't know what it is about it. i just love the the clubs i i love the uh just the whole process of it going through it all this it's a series that is just kind of tried and true i think every fm player at some point or another has done this now weirdly enough i have either done one where i was a league two team and went all the way up that was with exeter city that was on fm 20 and I've in uh, also on FM20. I did one where I was in the South, the uh, Vanarama uh, National League South. Which obviously you're in the semi-pro pyramid. That's even like more of a challenge. Obviously, this you know it, it's you have a lot of teams. First of all, in the National League, obviously, and, and it's uh, you're going up against like teams like Wrexham now that have obviously some some big backing of, of uh, financially speaking. You know, some big backing. So that's going to be tough to deal with. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just super excited to see how, how it all plays out. You know, I really have no idea what we're going to do tactically right now. We'll, we'll take a look at the squad and just kind of piece it together. But uh, here's what our stats are looking like to start off the year. As I just went with just the suggested badges. Just, to, you know, I felt like that was the easiest way to go about it. Sure, we could, probably could have made it more difficult and just stuck with, you know, as far as no uh, licensing and no, and you just see, like, literally like a you know sunday player for the past playing experience but i just felt like it was easier not only just for for us but i just think just just for the series itself is to just stick with this one thing i kind of wish i would have changed honestly is probably bump down the working with youngsters rating from 10 to 7 and bump up the attacking them and defending each to probably either 8 and 8 and then maybe put it somewhere else maybe on tactical to make it 10 uh, the adaptability at 1, I know a lot of people are probably going to be like, well, that's wild. Really, the adaptability, from what I have seen, because I figured at first the adaptability, from what I assumed, was just your your just literally your ability to, to change with how the season's going and how you, you can kind of bring the boys together and, and keep it rolling. But honestly, from what I have gathered, it's about more so the fact of if you're trying to get into a foreign league like how you're going to be able to adapt to that so that is something that i'm like i really don't necessarily care about that because obviously we're not going to be leaving england so there's that but uh, yeah i mean I, I think for stats wise starting off it's not bad at all obviously obviously you get to pick your own stats so that's not really a, a big deal but uh, yeah then we'll just see what york city's looking like yeah york city here we come we are pretty... Oh my god, we went way too fast there. What the fuck? Let's go back. There we go. As uh, So you're found in 1922. God damn. I mean, literally. You are at our 100 year anniversary. That is crazy to think. Wow. As uh, York... Uh, the, the York Community Stadium built a couple of years back, right before the pandemic. As uh, it's 8,512 capacity. Yeah, below average on the training and youth facilities that makes sense 28k on the transfer budget yeah we're gonna be on a uh, tight tight pinch but here's a i mean a club that really has had you know they were a sky bet league two champions back in 1984 i remember they were in the league two i think it was about 10 years ago 2013 2014 i remember they were in it uh, from, from what I remember, but Kingsley James, what a fucking name, though, first of all. <laughs> but uh, that is fantastic. So the media reputation at 14, that gives me a little bit of hope. But still, you know, we're, we're definitely going to be fighting off you know, relegation, I think. Because uh, I just don't think we'll have enough time to really bring everybody over. And whatnot. They want to stand under the third round of the FA 
trophy, but and then get the to the qualifying round of the FA Cup. So, yeah, that's uh, that's huge. That is huge. And what uh, this just oh, that's the FA Trophy. Wow, did not know they won it 2012 and 2017. So that that is fun. So yeah, the squad here they got us just in a uh, four. 3-3, three, three, which is fine, because this is just probably what we just got loaded up from the from using uh, the young boys, as far as on, on that save. But yeah, we got a couple of loans. Not bad, not bad at all. As, uh, I think it, it probably Dan Bypus is, is probably our best player. Crazy ter termination, crazy work rate. Very good stamina, too. Yeah, we're going to definitely need to be playing through him for the most part. don't think we'd have him be a DM, though. I think he probably should be playing in the midfield. But, uh, I mean, I guess as a defensive midfielder, it wouldn't be too terrible. I just want him running around the pitch and working with everybody else. Because I feel like he'd be on a, on his own back here. Kind of the in between, between the midfield and the the back line. But maybe not. Maybe that's kind of perfect for him, to be honest. To have a, a great high work rate. That's, uh, what's John Lewis's striking looking like? Oh, 10 finishing. Okay. Yeah, now John Lewis, not looking too hot there, but he's got a little bit of bravery. <laughs> That's, uh, pretty good. Penalty taking those 15 is, is nice if we ever need someone to, but I don't, I, it's kind of, just me personally, being a 5 foot 10 target for it is something that I don't really love having, but he's a hard worker though, so I do like that. Uh, the acceleration could be a lot better. Obviously, being 33 towards the the end of his run, but we'll definitely look to get another striker in here. See how Nathan Thomas is doing. Pretty good uh, crossing, dribbling, finishings better than our actual main striker. Pretty good long shots. Wow, yeah, Nathan Thomas not bad at all. Has a oh from an F oh an Afghan player. Wow. As a uh, yeah, finishing not great, which is fine since he's out there on the wing. Wish the crossing was a little bit better. Dribbling's fine. Uh, first touch is fine. Free kick taken at, at 12 is nice. See, high work rate. As, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll look through uh, everybody kind of in depth here in a little bit. But that, I'm just looking to see kind of some of the key positions. What we're, what we're looking. Probably should look at the goalie, but that's fine. So they want us to develop using the uh, youth system. That's, uh, that's going to be interesting, you know, using the youth system because... Our facilities shouldn't be great. They want us to play entertaining soccer. I think every fucking board, it seems like it, <laughs> so far in FM23, I have not had someone ask for entertaining soccer. So, wow. Uh, so, yeah, our contract expires at the end of the year. So we really got to put it all out there. We just got to reach the FA Cup and then have a top half finish in the National League. Wow, that is some high expectations, to be honest. Don't like that. Don't like that. My god, what a five-year plan, too. The to work for promotion. So there is, uh, there is that. He wants to get into the playoffs in two years. That's, uh, that is quite ambitious. I was not ready for for that, uh, as far as being that ambitious about it. But that's, uh, that's the way she goes. I guess, yeah, we get the press conferences. Yeah, we'll do the inner squad friendly as well. Just feel like that makes sense. Yeah, we do the save. How fun. But, yeah, this is, uh, it's always a fun moment, you know, to load up the new save. I forgot to change the skin now. So, uh, we will take a pause for the cause real quick and take a, a look at the roster with the new skin that we're using and all that fun jazz. Alrighty, so this is what we are going to be running in this save. As uh, we're going to go with a 4-3-3 to start it off. We are going to go with a wing play attack, which is going to be very interesting because usually... From what I like doing in FM, I just kind of like playing through the middle. And, and that's kind of my, my bread and butter. But I rarely go with just a wing play. And honestly, we're just trying to make the best out of our situation. Because even though Linnell John Lewis, you know, he's five foot ten and is 33 as a striker. And that's 10 finishing. But what he can do, he's a pretty good jumper. And he's pretty good at heading. He's got some high bravery. He's a leader. He's good at taking penalties. He's a hot, high work rate as well. Likes to play, you know, back to the, to the goal. So he's able to, as far as take up a lot of space in the middle, being the only one that will be a striker in the middle. I honestly thought 
about running a strikerless formation and um, just going with, instead of a custom wing play, going with something a little different. Uh, but uh, honestly, we don't have anybody good enough to just kind of play in the middle because I was just going to run like a probably either bump one of these three midfielders in and obviously bump this down. So we would have ran like a 4-2-4 four, four in a unique you know situation like that. But uh, that it's just kind of the way it is. Maybe potentially we switch to that if that's something we need to do or something we, we envision down the line. But uh, yeah, I think this is going to go pretty well. Uh, I'm not really looking as far as like defensively. We're not honestly going crazy with uh, our defensive shape or anything. We're just going to go with a low block, standard defensive line. We'll just kind of see how it goes. Obviously, we won't really know what our team is made of until probably... This Doncaster uh, friendly is probably our closest bet, if I had to get... Because Petersboro Sports, they are um, they are about to say... Oh, they are in the north. So, that, I mean, that's a nice little... I was thinking that they were either north or south, so that might be an interesting, but definitely Doncaster is definitely where we're going to find out kind of what we're made of, because obviously they're a League 2 team, and that's uh, that's going to be massive, massive for sure. As uh, yeah, now For this series, really the big thing, because obviously the National League, you see all the games we've got to play. So many games. We'll play this first one against Walking here, and it's... They are, uh, you know, it's the first home game. It's got to make sense the first game of the season. That'll be massive. But really, for the most part, we are going to be kind of seeing where the standings are. We'll only kind of be showing games as far as in full that are, you know, against like top teams. Just kind of from that perspective. Uh, we do have, as far as the next time you'll probably, after the opener... Uh, maybe the Dag and Red game. I always love Dag and Red, or even Old Ham or Maidenhead. Potentially there, Maidstone. I've always liked Maidstone for some reason. I don't know why, because I don't think they're going to be good enough. Uh, because uh, yeah, I just don't think they'll they'll be a, a good enough team to really warrant it. But uh, yeah, you know, we got the <laughs> Wrexham game here in December. Uh, so I'm sure they'll be at the top of the standings by then. But yeah, this, this is really going to be a, a big friendly to, to see kind of where everything is uh, placed up. Haven't really looked and see what we want to do as far as bringing anybody in. Uh, really the big thing for us, just kind of looking tactically, we're actually pretty solid as far as from the role perspective of things. I think our wingers are really going to help us out because they're pretty good at crossing. They are pretty good at dribbling for the most part. If I could ask for anything, if we were going to change away from the wing play section, because I actually like this a lot, is maybe get even a bigger target forward. Get somebody in here that's like 6-4 and up, and just, you know, be basic one-on-one -on -one football, where you're gonna kick it outside to the wingers, let them fucking cross it in. We're overlapping inside with our... Uh, as far as our fullbacks, our wingbacks rather in this case, and uh, we're just going to keep overlapping, play through our wingbacks, play through the outside channels, we're going to be wide and just, uh, we're going to have the floating cross for now, obviously we're looking to get the height on the delivery and hope it works out, potentially, if we start getting to the point where we have like an amazing finishing striker, but he's not tall enough, he's not going to win these, you know, jump balls, and we still want to play through our wingers and through wing play, definitely would not mind doing either a whipped or low cross approach. Uh, yeah, as far as this could be, really the big thing for me, I loved whipped crosses, but obviously it's kind of, you, you gotta be a certain type of talent really to, to do it on a consistent basis really, and I don't think at this level we could do that potentially, but you never know, you, know, you never know. If we can get somebody that's like really good at crossing, Definitely, you know, definitely could could try that because it's just it makes the defenders work so much harder. I don't think the defenders at this level could really do that consistently, but we'll see. We'll, we'll definitely see. I'm just a sucker for a four three three. I honestly thought, depending on how we do this, we might drop. You know, it's it's tough because if we are not getting the goals we need out of this wing play, I really don't know what we're gonna do because I don't want to do a Gagan press, and I don't want to do a counterattack because that's what I, I'm doing on the other saves. So I want to make this different. The big thing, I think, 
it, it could possibly be. I don't think I'll, I'll go tiki taka either. We might just go with a Route 1 approach. Just simple, basic. Just try to get the ball as quick as we can up, up the pitch. And kind of hope for the best. Maybe just even a control possession so it's not straight up tiki taka. It's just, you know, something like that. As far as, uh, from that perspective, potentially there. Uh, that's, you know, as far as what we are looking for from our midfield. You know, we have two ball-winning midfielders on each different side. Really, the idea is keeping the ball in this channel in the in the mid to final third area of the pitch we don't want it back here we don't we don't want it we don't need it i don't we want to be focused on getting clean sheets honestly and if we can keep the ball in this mid to final third pitch area this will be perfect absolutely perfect we're kind of thinking like as far as moving the ball we have the the triangles here you know we have our triangles to work through and once we get up here it drops into, hopefully, Bypass goes up. So now we have another triangle for here. And, you know, we obviously have one for there as well. So it's, that's the, the game plan, right? With having a box-to-box -box here in the middle. Potentially, if we don't like having two ball-winning midfielders on the sides, I'm really not sure what I would like to do because I don't think deep-line playmakers are really going to work for what we want. We might just go with either a... Mazala, or because it's gonna, they're gonna try to go wide and operate in kind of the half spaces. I think that would probably be what we go with, go with the Mazala. So that's just kind of thinking ahead. Oh uh, yeah, both being traditional wingers is probably the uh, the plan as far as going forward. We might have someone be an inverted winger just to kind of see what happens, just to kind of cut back. But really, that's just what mostly used for fullbacks, and we obviously are not going to be using fullbacks. We're going to be using wingbacks, which just kind of wouldn't make any sense, really, from that perspective. But also, too, obviously, with wingbacks, you know, they are usually there when there's not, uh, as far as playing with, like, no wing support. So we might end up just switching or either doing a complete wingback where it's more about attacking more than anything. Getting with the, go, going further, staying wide, running with the ball. That could definitely be something we look to do in the future as well or even an inverted wing back that could be interesting because yeah an inverted wing back could really help us out a lot because it's more of like this you know as far as it's more defensive and since we are going to have wingers up front obviously kind of thinking they don't get farther than this part of the pitch right below the uh the midfield line so we could kind of shovel everything not shovel shuttle <laughs> everything in the middle and the final third part of our pitch so we can keep it just we have so many different options to keep it if it's you know if somebody's in trouble if we're getting pressed or if they are going at a higher tempo than what we like we can slow it down find options and keep pushing the ball forward until we get to our wingers so it's going to be interesting because i i usually you know never really have my offense of uh, as far as the attacking part of football usually don't work like just focusing on the wingers usually i'm just like we want to get it to our strikers as quickly and as fast as possible and try to go with three balls or balls over the top and uh you know, just try to get a one-on-one -on -one against the goalie but now with this save we're going to change it up a little bit and we'll see how it works if, if we're going to have any success or not i think we I, you know honestly i didn't think this team would be this good going into it but our wingers are solid they can both cross pretty well uh, John Lewis, even though he's only five foot ten, pretty solid target forward. I think we're gonna do pretty pretty well. Uh, depending on how the wingbacks go, we might put them on defense instead of support, just to kind of help us out a little bit, because now they can cross from deep instead of because uh, right now they're at automatic, which, eh, yeah, because like it, they're gonna get further being support. So I, I think we might just stick with defense. I think that's gonna be. Because they're kind of hold the position more. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's what we're going to do instead. We'll just try it out. See what happens. Obviously, we've got a lot to, to toy with and kind of see. We've got a lot of games to test this out on. But this is definitely going to be our main. Uh, as far as our mentality goes, I would like to be positive. I would like to even be attacking even. Because I, I think we can be a team that can be on the offensive side of the pitch a lot more than being on, on the defensive thing. So... We might do that. We might just kind of see how it works. Or we might just stick with balance for the first 
you know, 10, 15 minutes of the game, just kind of see how it's uh, going to be dictated. Obviously, with uh, playing against our, you know, having the inner squad friendly tomorrow, uh, that should really show how the squad's going to do with this system at a very, uh, as far as elementary level uh, of things. But obviously, you know, having this National League, 24 fucking teams, they want us to finish right here at 14. I don't know if we're going to finish that, that that high. We might, though. We might, you know, as far as if this this system really works and they start clicking, it could work. We, uh, we have a lot of time to really, th- you know, we, we really have a full last month to really work on the squad and improve and just kind of see how everything works out. So that gives me a lot of hope. It's not like the uh, young boys save where we only had like two friendlies and we were like having to go right into the season while also over- overturning the entire roster. This should be a uh, formidable challenge for sure. Now the one rule that I have in this save is that I can't jump over a league. So I can't go from the National League to League 1. Yeah, I'll have to go to League 2 and from League 2 to League 1 and just kind of so so far and so forth. So that way we're going to every league and uh, yeah, everything should work out there. Now I can go, like if I for some odd reason don't like the team I'm at when I'm in the Champions League, but I want to drop down uh, from the Championship League down to uh, League 1 just to kind of figure out maybe there's a team that is on the rise as far as they got a really solid player or something like that or, or just they have a lot of backing financially definitely could do that but I doubt that's going to happen you know then we're pretty much looking to go forward and, and keep pushing forward but it should be fun you know as far as this should be a save that is kind of not so long term like the continent king is and I don't think it's going to be as short term as the young boy save is so it's really going to be in the middle of like it, it might take anywhere from six years to potentially more, you know, but usually a six year, I think as far as that's kind of the minimal, usually it, it takes, unless we're really rolling through and we're just like winning every league and we're moving at an extreme rate, but I, I just don't think that's going to happen. But yeah, I mean, that's should be fun. And, and we're staying in England for the most part, so it's not going to be too crazy of a save or anything. But yeah, thank you all for watching the intro for this York City. Here we are. We are here, and we are looking to make a big splash in the Vanarama National League. So we're going to work our way up from the National League to the Premier League. Take care, everyone.